Well, hello everyone and welcome to another super exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. So in this episode, we're going to be doing a tomato harvest video. I just figured it'd been a, it's been a while and right now we're in peak season for all the tomatoes starting to ripen. And I just wanted to walk you all around, show you guys some of the tomatoes that are ripening. We've got a boatload inside. We're making uh, tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, uh, pizza sauce, everything like that. Um, so it's the time of year and it's the time of year everyone loves to see which is all of the diversity and the colors that are coming from our garden. So uh, yeah, so let's go see what's ripening up and we'll make this a, we'll make this a quick one because we do have some rain in the forecast. I don't know if you can see the dark clouds. It's a coming, which is good because we really need it. <laughs> all right, let's go. So the first thing I wanna harvest here are some of the Romas. We've got just a ton of Romas coming on. These are actually a, uh, an indeterminate Roma and one of the problems is it gets so heavy that they all fall on the ground. So, they, uh, so they're, they're very susceptible to getting bug bites. So we have to harvest them just a little bit sooner than I would like, but still, I mean, really stunning nonetheless. Um, it's just they're, they're so low on the ground that you know, slugs and things like that can get to them and uh, we don't want that to happen. So, um, so you, just gotta, you, know, you just gotta pick them a little, I, orange to orange to red it's not like it's a big deal but they'll ripen up all 100 indoors now i am banking on one of these being the largest tomatoes we've ever grown we did grow a 1.9 pound cherokee purple but i think i think this one right here could easily be pushing two pounds we've never grown a two pound tomato so i'm leaving this on as long as i possibly can and uh, there's another there's another just hefty one right there another absolutely massive one here these are pineapple tomatoes so they are huge and then there's massive ones up here. These tomatoes regularly grow over a pound and usually they get two pounds. So um, under good conditions, I think we should be able to get our first, very first two pound tomato, but it's not yet ready, but we'll bring you all along for it. I promise. Wow, that thing is a beast. It's starting to ripen, it's starting to blush, so it won't be too much longer. And then of course you have the red pear tomatoes, which are always prolific, always going crazy. These are our our favorite little, uh, I guess you could you could consider them. They're, I mean, they're kind of a cherry tomato, but they're not really a cherry tomato. They're a pear tomato. Um, <laughs> by by all uh, by all definitions, this is a pear tomato. But um, I guess we kind of still consider them like a cherry tomato. But uh, they're so sweet. They're so prolific, and uh, we can come out here and pick. We can pick a good handful every single day. Um, and we have two, we have actually have two plants. So I'm gonna go pick from, from that plant too. But yeah, they're coming on like crazy and you gotta constantly come in here too and prune off these suckers. The, the, the red pear and the yellow pear love to produce these side shoots all over the place. So we're always picking those things off so they focus energy on more fruit and not doing a whole bunch of side growth. So that's a constant, that's a constant battle there. This one got away from us, whoa. <laughs> Don't let your suckers get away from you. And here's our black plum. This is also just another incredible variety. It's so sweet. I absolutely love this one for fresh tomato, basil, and cucumber salads. Just can't beat the flavor. And it's super productive. I mean, this is from one little, <laughs> one little truss of tomatoes and they are just loaded up here. So that is, uh, and this one is starting to blush. I'll pull that one off because we won't be home for another day. So uh, I gotta pick them a little bit early so that uh, they don't get eaten on the vine. But wow, those are pure, perfect ripeness right there. That is beautiful. And here's the second black plum that we have, just to give you a rough idea of just how many tomatoes are on this plant. It's absolutely mind blowing. The plant is just laden all the way up. As you can see, the size on these yellow pear tomatoes is great. I mean, they're just, these things are hefty, but they're productive. So I absolutely always have to be growing some of the yellow pear tomatoes because they are so vibrant, so, so vibrant, and they're really, really sweet. So awesome. On to the next one. Alrighty, we've got a Cherokee purple here. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. 
about 95% ripe. Just uh, picking it so that it can ripen fully indoors because uh, wow, wow, I'd hate to lose this one on the vine. That is pretty. That's, that's easily a pound. No doubt that's easily a pound. That is, that's a hefty tomato right there. And here we have a cross. This is one that we've kind of been just kind of experimenting with. And it's a cross between a sun gold and a pineapple. And this was from last year's, last year's garden. And uh, very interesting fruit here. Still does not, uh, I mean, it's just a hybrid. So it's kind of, it's kind of a mutt of a tomato, <laughs> but, but I was just kind of curious to see what would happen. And I've kind of been dabbling with doing some fruit crosses here and there, but um, it's interesting. It's really interesting. It's got the, it has the a little bit of pineapple there, but it's definitely more of like a sun gold size and shape and things like that. Very cool, very interesting. But yeah, so that's the, uh, <laughs> I don't know what you'd call it. That's the sun gold pineapple there. Now you don't have to tell me twice that this is one of the most incredible strings of tomatoes you've ever seen because it's definitely one of the most incredible strings of tomatoes I've ever seen. So I am, I am astounded by how productive this plant is here. This is, this is the money maker. There we go. Nice, beautiful one there. This one got eaten. Of course, that's what usually happens when you leave them on the vine to hundred percent ripen, especially when it's so dry, you got, you just got to assume some are going to get going to get snacked on, but wow, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love this tomato. That's a great producer right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. That's very pretty. This is the, uh, this is the other twin to the, to the other, this is the other money maker. And, um, it's got a little more foliage on it. I was testing to see about, um, if I leave all the foliage on kind of how the plant produces versus single stemming with almost 100% defoliation along the stem. I do simple, I do, I dabble with different experiments here and there in the garden. Um, and so I just, just out of curiosity to see. So this is the same type of tomato that I just harvested from, but this one has substantially more foliage. And I, I'm doing just kind of some tests on if it's sweeter or the more foliage it has, is it sweeter? Cause it can create more sugars. Um, is the fruit larger? Is it more productive, less productive, things like that. Just yeah, weird stuff that, you know, if you're a garden, if you're a gardener and you uh, love what you do, it's just fun to do a little experiments like that to, to keep your mind occupied. So yeah, it's a cool one. And here's our ACE 55. Beautiful. That is, whew, that's easily a pound there. So that's a nice one. I got one on the other side. I'm going to harvest as well. All right. So we got this one here. This one's growing so close to the there, it was growing so close to the post. Oh, that is just, oh my gosh, that is just stunning. Oh my word, you can't ask for a prettier tomato, really. I mean, that is blemish free. Wow, that is absolutely stunning. I love, love, love the A55 tomatoes. And then we got the Opalcas, which is a, just this, this tomato is blowing my mind with how productive this is. I mean, you've got, tomatoes way up here got a whole cluster of just goliath tomatoes i mean these are huge tomatoes just on the biggest strings you can imagine and we've got some ripe ones down here we've been picking a bunch of them and actually saving seeds for the 2018 seed store check that out oh my gosh holy smokes these are huge but wait to see what i got going on the other side definitely really really cool i'm like i i can't wait to show you those so what you see here is a product of my cross my dabbling in crossing this is a cross between an ox heart tomato and an opalka tomato Look at the size of this opalka tomato. I mean, I guess it's no longer an opalka tomato, but theoretically, 
uh, it's for all intents and purposes kind of still an opaco tomato. <laughs> Um, because what I was looking to do was increase the size of the opalco tomato. And I believe I did just that. Check out how large these tomatoes are. They are absolutely insane compared to regular opalca, cross opalca, absolutely huge. Now this one does still have some ripening to do because it was so low to the ground, I didn't want it to get eaten. So I had to pick it when it was starting to blush. But we'll still be saving seeds from this. There'll still be mature seeds in this, no doubt. But you can see just an incredible size difference. So we'll be saving seeds from this and continuing to grow it out to stabilize this because this is incredible. But you can just see they're all growing. Like, I mean, I can't even, <laughs> that, how do you even put that into words? That is so massive and Check this out, look at this. Look at that. They are just gargantuan. And there's tons of them. So they produce just like the opalcas, but in terms of size, they're like, they're like two to two and a half times bigger than the regular opalcas. And then we've got some pink brandy wines here. Love that variety. It's just a real classic, uh, pink beefsteak variety, just huge too. That's easily over a pound. We've loved, we loved growing uh, small tomatoes in the past, but I don't know, there's something about big tomatoes. You don't get as many of them, but I love growing a hefty tomato. It is just so much fun. So, and we're still getting lots of smaller tomatoes as well, but this year we really focused on just growing just beastie tomatoes. And I'll get this one here. Again, I understand that it's green on top. But look, I mean, it's like 90% ripened, so we'll let the rest ripen up indoors so it doesn't get, just get uh, annihilated by a bird. And then finally, we've got the Orange Russellini. It's a classic tomato here. Wow. I absolutely love this tomato for drying and turning into sun-dried tomatoes, which we'll do a video on fairly soon once we get a good, port a good amount of them. I'm going to be doing a, a video on sun drying and it's just, oh my gosh, this tomato is so deep red. I mean, it, the camera doesn't do any justice for how deep red this is. And the color uh, is just, just half of the tomato. The other half is flavor. It is flavor packed. It is such a stunning red and it is, wow, it is so delicious. So yeah, we're going to be sun drying these. Oh, so cool. So thanks for coming with me today to pick a good basket of tomatoes. This thing weighs a ton. This thing's probably close to 20 pounds and it's just tomatoes, just tomatoes. This is absolutely outstanding. I cannot get enough of these tomatoes here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a little trick here. We take the, the, um, the edges, fold it up on itself, helps to trap some of that ethylene gas. We'll ripen this whole basket up on the countertop and in a couple days we'll have perfectly ripe, beautiful tomatoes. So it's a little tip for you to help you out. You can even do the same thing with a bowl. So as always, this is Luke with the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow your heirlooms, grow bigger, go home, and we'll catch y'all later. See ya.